become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding hi everybody golden era bookworm here and today i wanted to go through some awesome equipment that was used long ago to develop strength and power and unfortunately much of it has been forgotten over time as most of you probably understand, the silver era methods of training had a heavy focus on the basics to lay a foundation, and therefore the lifters back then would think of genius ways of improving their lifts in the bench or standing press and the squat and deadlift. The equipment invented then therefore was oriented around the goals they were trying to achieve. For example, most of us use or have heard of at least and had the courage to step into a power rack with the purpose of working on, for example, lockout presses, partial squats, or partial rack deadlifts. Squat stands or racks existed back then, but amongst these basic pieces of equipment, the hopper and the Harvey Maxim bar were also invented to aid in the above mentioned lifts. These pieces of equipment were used prominently during the silver era and I will be talking about both in this video. Enjoy! Joe Heese being the inventor of the 20 rep breathing squat realized that by almost bouncing or rebounding at the whole of the squat that is the bottom position that allowed him to grind out those heavy high repetition sets of squats. This of course gave his thighs and lower back great power and size. However, he realized that his pulling muscles, that is the lats and the muscles of the back, for example, the traps and the rear deltoids, did not benefit at all, obviously not from the squat. So using the same rebounding principle, he invented the hopper. This piece of equipment as shown in this diagram essentially allowed the lifter to perform partial stiff-legged deadlifts that would affect the hamstrings and thighs, of course, but also would allow the pulling muscles of the back and shoulders to benefit greatly. Thereafter, these partial stiff-legged deadlifts performed using the hopper apparatus were termed hopper deadlifts. Typically, trainees would be performing the hopper deadlift with 450 to 500 pounds for repetitions, some using up to 700 pounds, and in doing so, trainers practicing both the 20 rep squat and the hopper deadlift found that their poundages that previously were unattainable in both, for example, the clean and the snatch went up as there was no mental block. That is, the barbell felt so light cleaning, for example, three to four hundred pounds after handling up to five to seven hundred pounds during each workout. I mean, it is no wonder that mental block was destroyed. It was gone. Now, the construction of the Heese Hopper Deadlift platform is actually given in this image. Again, I've talked about this in the past, but here it is again. Essentially, it has a couple of five inch wooden planks stacked on top of each other uh, on each side and it would be directly under the weight. So they'd be in line directly under the weight, as you can see, um, and they'd be in a frame. It's very, very simple, a very, very simple construction. Anybody can do that at home. Uh, basically, it allows you to then bounce the weight off the planks and therefore allow you to do rebounding deadlifts. Of course, nowadays, one can use a power rack to perform such motions, or equally, one could easily construct a Heese Hopper deadlift frame at home. Now, because the hopper was restricted to deadlifting and cleaning alone, Silver Era bodybuilders thought up of another wonderful piece of equipment known as the Harvey Maxim Bar. Invented by Mr. Roosevelt Harvey, the Maxim Bar resembled a football goalpost as shown in the images here, with two upright bars and a third bar that went across that was actually attached to the two upright bars. At the base of each of the upright bars were attachments for adding weight. Because the bar could slide up and down, that is the crossbar could slide up and down the upright bars, the height of the crossbar could be adjusted and therefore allow for a full variety of exercises to be performed. Although costly at the time, it allowed for, for example, quarter squats and half squats, jerks or partial presses, and partial deadlifts. 
It was generally safe because you couldn't get caught under the bar as it could easily be placed on the floor. The semi-contraction or partial range of motion exercises allowed for very high poundages to be used and therefore developed the tendons and ligaments as well as the muscles. Progression was achieved by moving the bar inch by inch inch until a full range of motion was achieved. Genius, I say. For example, you could start with barely a dip in the squat and eventually, eventually by moving the bar down inch by inch, week by week, you would be performing a half squat, at which point you would increase the poundage and restrict the range of motion again and start all over. One advocate of the Maxine bar, and as, as an example, was William Boone, who over time achieved a 400 pound jerk using the Maxine bar. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the many successful Silver Era methods, please head to my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com, where you will find ebooks such as The Greatest Silver Era Programs, which explains the technique and program for the 20 rep squat program, also the 20 rep rebounding deadlift program, and the 20 rep rebounding clean program, all of which use the apparatuses that I've explained in this video. Another great title is Weightlifting by Bob Hoffman, which explains the many exercises that John Grimmick used to develop his Herculean strength and physique, all available on my website www.goldenerabookworm.com. So I do hope you have enjoyed this look at the Maxime bar and the hopper apparatus. Of course, besides the trusty power rack or squat rack, which we can use to substitute for these pieces of equipment. Um, to be honest, these pieces of equipment, that is the Maxime bar and the hopper apparatus, aren't too difficult to create at home. And I will go through in a separate video how to make your own Maxime bar and hopper deadlift apparatus for those that have the space. If you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the Golden Era Bookworm if you haven't done so, and please leave me your comments. To support the channel, please donate via PayPal, become a patron, and please visit my respective websites for out of print books, as ebooks that is, and new school bodybuilding apparel on my new Teespring store. Details are in the description. That's it from me, this is the Golden Era Bookworm, saying bye for now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvelous range of supplements using my code bookworm12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.